Hello everyone, welcome to Botany Optional Channel for UPSC examination. In this particular video, we are going to see the differences between the pteridophyte and gymnosperm. As you know, the pteridophytes and gymnosperm form the two important plant groups in the plant kingdom. On the evolutionary scale, the gymnosperms are considered as a more advanced as compared to the pteridophytes. So, we will define some characteristic features of pteridophytes as well as the gymnosperms and compare them simultaneously to find out what are the basic differences between the two plant groups all right so before starting the video i request you to join the telegram channel of the same name that is the bot national for ups examination on the telegram platform there we regularly upload the pdfs of these videos plus link of the videos so that you will not miss any update relating with the botany channel so let's learn about the differences between the pteridophytes and gymnosperms now the very first difference we are going to see is about the roots of pteridophyte and the gymnosperms both this group has a different types of roots and that is why a root can be the basis for the difference between the pteridophytes and the gymnosperms. First of all, the roots of most of the pteridophytes is adventitious in nature. That is, almost all the pteridophytes has the adventitious type of root system. But on the other hand, the main root system in the gymnosperm is the tap root system. And from this tap root system, fibrous roots are comes out later. But the main root system in the gymnosperm is a taproot system, while the main root system in the pteridophytes is a adventitious root system. So morphologically, root differs in the pteridophyte and gymnosperm. In pteridophyte, it is adventitious, while in gymnosperm, is it is a taproot system. All right. The next difference between the two is in their steel. As you know, steel is very defining characteristic in the pteridophytes, right? Because in a pteridophyte, we find the various type of steels. And the steel structure in the pteridophyte, it varies from the proto-steel to the U-steel. That is, the different kinds of steels found in the pteridophytes. But on the other hand, in the gymnosperm, usually you find the U-steel only. So when we talk about the steel in the pteridophytes, there is a wide range of steels from proto-steel to the U-steel in the pteridophytes. While in gymnosperm, usually there is only the U-steel. So this is a very important anatomical difference between the pteridophyte and gymnosperm. From the secondary growth point of view, also the pteridophytes and the gymnosperm differ from one another. The pteridophytes on the one hand do not show any secondary growth and while on the other hand, the gymnosperm due to their vascular cambium activity shows the secondary growth. So the gymnosperm has the secondary growth but the pteridophytes do not show any type of secondary growth. But there is the exceptions such as isoetis, that is the pteridophyte shows some degree of secondary growth. Except few exceptions, generally the pteridophyte do not show any secondary growth in their plant body. But the gymnosperms are quite famous for their secondary growth because its wood is commercially very important. And this wood is formed after the secondary growth. So in gymnosperm we generally find the secondary growth but in almost all pteridophytes there is a no secondary growth. Now let's talk about the gametophyte of pteridophyte and gymnosperm. Now the gametophyte of pteridophyte is green in color plus it is long lived that its life is quite long. But on the other hand the gametophyte of gymnosperm is colorless and is very short lived. So there is a very basic difference between the gametophyte of pteridophyte and gymnosperm that the, that the gametophyte of Pteridophyte is green in color and it is usually has the long life while the gametophyte of gymnosperm is a short lived and it is colorless. The next difference between the two is relating with the pollen tube formation. In the pteridophytes, as you know, pteridophytes are spore bearing plants and they do not show any development of the pollen tube. But on the other hand, the gymnosperms produce the pollen tube. As you can observe in this diagram, the gymnosperms after the microspore germinates, then these microspores give rise to the pollen tube. But this does not happen in the pteridophytes because they do not show any development of the pollen tube. All right. So you should remember that the pollen tube development occurs in the gymnosperm, but the pollen tube development does not occur in the pteridophytes. All right. Now the next important difference between the two is relating with the microspore and the megaspore. As you know, heterospore can be found in both pteridophytes as well as in the gymnosperm. But the microspores and the megaspores of the pteridophytes is shed off from the respective sporangia. That is, the microspore shed out from the microsporangium 
while the megaspore shed out from the megaspore angium. The microspore liberated from the microspore angium while the megaspore shed off from the megaspore angium. All right. But on the other hand, in the gymnosperms, the microspore the microspores are shed off from the microspore angium, but the megaspore do not shed off from the megaspore angium. It remains in a megaspore angium till there is the pollination and fertilization. All right. So the very important and peculiar difference in the tail of head and gymnosperm is that the shading of microspore and megaspore in the pteridophyte happens from the megasporangium and the microsporangium but on the other hand the microspore in the gymnosperm the microspore shed off from the microsporangium but megaspores do not shed from the megasporangium all right now the next difference is relating with the seeds it is obvious that do not show the presence of any seed but the gymnosperm produce the seeds as you know seed producing plants we collectively call them as a phanerogams right these are phanerogams contains the gymnosperms and the angiosperms because both these plants produce the seeds. But on the other hand, the pteridophytes do not produce any kind of seed and that is why we cannot consider them as the phanerogams. All right. So the seeds are not found in the pteridophytes, but these are seeds are present in the gymnosperms. The next difference between the two is relating with the archegonia. In the pteridophyte, the archegonia contains the nid canal cells as well as the dental canal cells. But in the archegonia of the gymnosperm, the neck canal cells are very much re reduced and the ventral canal cells are almost absent. So, anatomically, from the archegonia point of view, the archegonia of the pterodophytes possess the neck canal cells as well as the ventral canal cells, but the gymnosperms archegonia contains the reduced neck canal cells and there is absence of ventral canal cells. Now, the next difference between the two is about their habitat. Now, the habitat of the pterodophyte is generally moist and shady places. As you know, the ferns are tends to grow around the moist and shady places where there is a near there is a availability of the water. But on the other hand, the gymnosperm shows the xerophytic habitat. That is, they can grow in the scarcity of water. So, on the one hand, the gymnosperm can grow without the water, but on the other hand, the pterodophytes require the moist and shady places to complete their growth and development. So this is a very important difference between the two about their habitat. Now the next difference is about their plant body size. See, the pteridophytes are the average size plants. They do not grow luxuriantly as the gymnosperms. Gymnosperms are very high growing plants and they have a tremendous height and tremendous lifespan as well. But on the other hand, the pteridophytes generally shows the average size plants and, and they also have the average age. But on the other hand, the gymnosperm grows luxuriantly and they have the very large lifespan. So the body size of the pteridophyte is generally small, while the body size of the gymnosperm is generally, is generally the large one. All right. Now the next difference between the two is about the homospory and the heterospory. As you know, the pteridophytes generally show both type of the spores, that is the homospores as well as the heterospore. Homosporous plants as well as the heterosporous plants both are present in the pteridophytes. But on the other hand, the gymnosperms strictly shows the heterospory. So the gymnosperm on the one hand being the heterosporous, on the other hand the pteridophytes are maybe the homosporous or the heterosporous. Again this is a very important difference between the pteridophyte and the gymnosperm. The next difference between the two is relating with the branching. That is if you observe the branching in the pteridophytes, you will observe this branching is a dichotomous branching. While on the other hand the branching in the gymnosperms is a lateral type of branching. So, in a gymnosperm, you will find the lateral branching, while in the pteridophyte, you will find the dichotomous type of branching. So, again, this is a very important morphological difference between the pteridophyte and the gymnosperm. All right. So, all these are the differences between the pteridophyte and gymnosperm. I hope you like this lecture. Please like the video. Please share this video with your friends who are studying botany. And please subscribe to the botany optional channel for UPSC examination. Again, thank you very much for watching this video. See you in the next one.